Welcome back to Life to the Max. You know, sometimes you meet people and you say, my gosh, it's amazing. It's amazing what people can do when they get committed. Such is the case with Janet and Bud Bonema. They had a vision, a mission, and it became a calling. And that calling took them all the way to Haiti. It is difficult to connect the dots, how here in the third world Haiti, could relate to a couple in Prinsburg, Minnesota. Ministry and Difficult ministry until you meet Bonham. Janet Bonama. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I was watching the news at my grandparents and the war in Vietnam was going on and I all, saw all these children running out of the village and I told my parents I want to go there. And of course, you know, they laughed it off. I'm 10 years old. Well, years go by, I never forgot that. Her destination would not end up Vietnam, but Haiti where she would find a connection and a calling. We were invited to go to Haiti by a guy that we knew. We had met him years ago. He is Haitian. He took us to see orphanages. He took us to see hospitals, different places. We were just sitting in, the, in a vehicle on the street and a lady asked us if we could take her baby. And so we were asking him, where can these babies go? And Pierre says, unless a missionary takes them in, they're dying. So began a mission to save children who would otherwise be abandoned. To understand why, you have to understand the Bonama family. Her husband, Bud, was a police officer. They moved from the Twin Cities to tiny Prinsburg with an attitude led by faith that allowed for adventure. The comforts of life that come with middle-class living weren't that important to us. So to give up the cushiness of what we have to go live in what I call cement tents, it's camping with a cement tent, uh, it wasn't a big step for us. That's why they are able to journey back and forth, sometimes accompanied by their own children, because a dire situation needed to be addressed. There was a baby that was brought to us because the, um, the uncle rescued it because the mother threw it into the water, into the river. It's not that they don't love them, but when they're so desperate that they have to either watch their child die or what choices do they have to make. To understand the situations, you have to understand Haiti. Some of the people who have no hope sit around all day just waiting for the sun to go down to fall asleep again and, and get out of their pain. True depression, yeah. True depression. I never understood what the word hope meant until I saw complete hopelessness in some of the people. That's why their facility, Children of Promise, was needed to shelter and heal the babies of the people that did not know what to do. We also do some first Sarah Baker is the field director the here, interacting with a culture like foreign to most on the staff. The majority of Haitians live in all complete poverty. Um, you know, it's mostly just a matter of daily survival, finding their food for the day. This is where all of our smallest babies sleep, um, except for Eli here. He's fighting his nap time. On seven and a half acres, the facility is a welcome addition to the village of 150, a safe refuge that they have not seen. Children of the Promise is one of the biggest help for uh, the country, for those kids, because there's not a lot of orphanage or crash that take care of those little ones. And many times, these little ones are destined for the unthinkable. The baby was born without legs, and his hand was just two fingers, two digits, and the father was going to kill it. So she needed to get the baby away from the hut where it was born in so it wouldn't die. She wanted to save him. And so about two days later, they brought him to us. They did not tell the father where he had gone so that we could protect him and keep him. He's a beautiful, healthy, normal little boy. He's living with us now. He's going to be adopted to the States. He already has a family. And that process of being able to find families, primarily in the United States and Canada, is both an act with business-like qualifiers and human emotion. Just to take care of them and to be there and care for them and to see them grow and, and finally to see them either return home to their biological families or else to their adoptive families. As you tour the village and the facility, you are struck by the innocence of the children. Visiting Children of the Promise was a, a great experience. The, the children are being well taken care of. And it just gives you the reassurance that what they're doing is a good thing, that these children just need to be loved and taken care of. 
As they change the hope of the children of Haiti, Haiti changes the people who volunteer. They live in a situation that is out of their control. They don't like it. They wish things were better for themselves, but it's not, and that's what they have to live with, and for them, it's just survival. And when you return to your homeland, the effect can be even more profound. I would walk into a grocery store, see all the food, I would start crying and walk back out again. In these faces of the future, you are drawn, you are motivated, you are affected. Just meeting them, seeing their joy, and just loving them, you can't help but fall in love with them and the, and the people here. It is what allows the Bonamas to build it, to nourish it, to believe in it. My faith's in God, and if he called us to do there, regardless of what happens, we want to be obedient. That's what they're doing, making the world a better place in a specific way that they are called to do so. You can see the difference when you know an infant that is going to be thrown away or is no one can care for it. It's just, just going to be left to die, even though someone loves it so much. And you know that somewhere, somehow, it's going to change the world. And that's what we're doing. And by the way, one of those first children that was presented to them in Haiti, the Bonamas adopted. And she lives in Prinsburg, Minnesota with their family now. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.